Yo, peace was good. Welcome to another hip hop album review. This is part two seventy seven. The album that I'll be reviewing uh, this evening will be uh, the Beat Nuts with their sixth album. And the last time they dropped as a group, you know, at least for a while. You know, I don't know if they're gonna ever drop any more albums, but this is be considered like their final studio album titled Milk Me, uh, released in uh, two thousand four. Uh, did a review of pretty much all their projects, with the exception of like the compilation albums. Um, you know, like the UFO files, or it's, um, that shit goes for a lot of money online. And it's very expensive. Um, Beat Nuts Forever is like more like a, um, you know, a credit hits with some exclusive tracks. So I was kind of want to focus more on the studio albums. Now getting back to this album, like I said, this is their uh, sixth album. Um, guys should know who they are. Did a review on all their albums. I'm not going to get into who they are, but uh, if you want, check out the Intoxicated Demons uh, album review or EP review that I did months ago. All right, so nothing too crazy. Um, you see, like, you know, the, uh, you know, a model getting milk spilt on her. I like that. It's kind of cool. I like the um, kind of like paint, you know, it's getting dropped on her and stuff like that, like milk and stuff like that. Milk me. It's pretty cool. All right, it's what it looks like. Uh, I kind of like that. It kind of has like that uh the nat uh the nutrition facts fonts and it has like that the labeling. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, something I just realized um today. I didn't really realize that. I didn't really when I first bought the album. Like you know, I didn't really think about it like that. But like just looking at it, kind of that's kind of dope. So, um, there's uh two singles of the album. The singles are hot, and um. What was the, that joke with Akon? Um, find Us. Find Us in the Back of the Club. Those are the uh, two singles of the album. Show you what the album looks like. Alright. Open it up. Pretty cool. Right. See Homegirl, you know, holding her chest. Milk being poured over her. Nice, uh, nice frame, if you will. <laughs> I was looking at that. Open it up. Yeah, you know. And you got the beat nuts right here. You know, you got Psycho Less. You got Juju right here. You know what I mean? And pretty much just like the album credits, like the production and all that. You got the thank yous and stuff like that. So, now let's get into the uh, features of the album. Uh, features uh, can include a drag nice, of nice and smooth, a uh, Prince Whipper Whip. Old school rapper from the early days. I think he's part of the Fearless Four or the Treacherous Five or one, one, of, one of those groups. I uh, forgot which one. Um, AG of uh, Showbiz and AT, DITC, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, D -I, uh, DITC uh, fame. Gab Goblin, he's been on a couple of the Beat Nuts albums before. Akon, as I mentioned before. Freeway, Razel. Human Beatbox also was part of the Roots at one point. Uh, Chris Chandler, Triple Saints of uh, Terror Squad fame, Corleone, uh, Tony Touch, Tony Toca, Gab Goblin once again, Milano. Milano is fucking, bro. He's a dope, dope MC. He's a dope producer, dude. He makes some dope beats. And uh, Chris Chandler, all right? Those are the features. Now let's get into the album. Let's get into what the you know some of the tracks and stuff like that. Um, track one is the intro. You know, nothing too crazy. It's just you know Fat Man School chanting uh, "Beat Nuts" over a beat and that kind of thing. So nothing to write anything home about. So I didn't really get much to it. Um, track two, "Hot" featuring Greg Nice. Fucking love that track. Love the beat for it. Um, yeah, really, really, really dope. Love the beat for that. It's the first thing of the album. D to me, a dope way to start the album. Um, I like the line uh, by Juju when he said, uh, slap the first thing at that plays me to closes. So drunk, still grabbing chochas. Dark and sneaky like the rats and roaches. Careful in the way you catch approaches. Because playing, <clears throat> you more out of shape than in the coaches. Fucking dope. That's dope. Um, Tony Yayo. He did a freestyle over this beat, um, like around that same time, like 2003, 2004. Um, that's that he he went hard over that. If I find it, you know, I post it down in the description box. But that was track uh, two, hot featuring Greg Nice. Definitely one of my favorite tracks of the album. 
Um, track three, Buggin featuring Prince Whipper Whip. Oh my God. Um, there it was an okay beat, but the lyrics were weak. Did not care for it at all. Um, there was a line that Psycho Les was kind of weak when he said, "So fresh, so bling, man, doing the damn thing, thing, man. We packed the metal thing that was um." That Ricky shirt like bing bang. Come on, man. Prince Whipper Whip, when he says, I've been blessed with a gift and only natural floss. That's why they call me El Jefe, head honcho, big boss. Like, come on, man. I, like, it's weak. Like, that's 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 very thought provoking. Woo! Like, come on, man. That's, that was trash. All right. Um, Track four, It's Nothing Fusion AG. Gab Goblin. I uh, did not care for that song at all. Uh, the beat is whack. Um, weak track. Wasn't too fond of it. AG couldn't even save the song. That's how bad it is. Uh, could have done without that. Um, track five. Um, rock and roll interlude. It's just them chopping up the rock break. You know what I mean? There's nothing too crazy about it. All right. Um, track six. Um, Find us featuring Akon. Uh, this is a dope track. There is a video for that joint right there. Um, it does have a video for it. Catchy song. I like that line by Juju when he says, Look, don't approach me in a physical manner. Because the cannon I'm holding in... The cannon I'm holding ain't a digital camera. That's fucking dope. I fucks with that. That's one thing I knew about Juju, you know. Even from early on, he always came with the more gangster tracks, like the more street-oriented lyrics. Whereas... Um, Psycho was like more like the fun playboy, all about the women, the more perverted lyrics and stuff like that. Juju does too, but Psycho is kind of like more smooth with it, you know. Whereas you know Juju always had like a more raw approach, if you will. Um, let me swig the water real quick. All right, all right. So that's track um, six. Find us in the back of the club. Track 7, You Know I'm Saying, featuring Freeway. Uh, I, I could have done without that song. Um, the beat was like, mm, yeah, whatever. Um, track 8, We Don't Give a Funk. It just sounded like a, like a doorway Neptune's beat. Like, it's just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, I could have done without that too. Um, let's see. Track 9, uh, Confused Rappers. Yeah, could have done without that too. Not too crazy about that. Uh, track ten, all night feature with Chris Chandler. Um, again, uh, it's, it's the production, man. I just, it just sounds very pop. It just, it just sounds like something that J Lo um would have used on one of her songs and stuff like that. I could see her. You know, J-Lo being, you know, using that for one of our albums. Like, them producing that for J-Lo. Uh, but for them, like, not so much. You know, could have done without that, too. Um, track 11, Madness. Mm, nah, I'm, I'm good on that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Just not that good at all. Um, track 13, We Getting Paper, featuring Triple Six and Chloe Young. Actually, a dope track. One of my favorite tracks of the album, too. Um, you know, I didn't write any lyrics to it, but um, it definitely got some got some shit on here. Um, I'm just surprised that Triple C's never dropped a solo album, especially around that time. You know, I would have loved for him to drop an album, like, around, like, um, you know, like, 2000, 2001. You know, production by the Beat Nuts, you know, uh, Vic, you know, stuff like that. It would have been dope, but, you know, unfortunately, that never happened. But it was dope. So that was track uh, uh, 12 again, Paper. Track 13, uh, Marching Band Interlude. Very simple. It's just an instrumental with a simple bass line. It has like a marching band sample into it. So, you know, nothing too crazy. Um, track 14, uh-huh. Uh, dope beat, dope song. I just, the, the uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Throughout the song is like mad annoying. I could have done without that shit. Like it, after a while, it could get pretty annoying. But overall, the dope song right there. Um, then we got track fifteen, down featuring Milano. 
Uh, that's another dope track right there. I fucks with that. Um, one of my favorite tracks of the album. I like the line by uh, Psycho Lust when he says, Heavy artillery to cover your facility. Murder you like a Kenny. Change my identity. Skip town and throw the peace on like a hippie. Woo! Fire. That He went hard. That that goes hard. So, yeah. So that was track uh, 15 down. Um, Track 16. Take your pants off interlude. This shit is so cringe. It's almost very rapey. It's just... <laughs> I can't. Yo, okay. So, it, it's just a skit of some dude. It, it's more than like a juju just because of the way he talks and shit. But you can tell that they pitched his voice really low. It's like almost like baritone. So, we'll talk about um, asking, a, asking, and he's telling the girl at the same Yo, take your pants off. Yo, come on, shorty. Come on, shorty. Take your pants off. Okay. Like, but it's mad cringe. Like, what are you doing? Like, it's like... <laughs> you couldn't do that today. But, you know, this was like the early 2000s. So, you know, it's kind of crazy. But, yeah, I could have done without that. Uh, track 4. Um, I mean, excuse me. Track 17, Freak Off, featuring Chris Chandler. Um, it is a sex track. But the beat is dope, so I, I um I fucks with that. And then track eighteen, Milk Me. Um it's an interlude, but it's also a bonus track. Um it's a dope beat to it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um Yeah, this album, uh being that it's like the last thing they dropped as a group, um, yeah. It wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. Um it's very weak. It's like one of the weaker albums. Um, as crazy as this sounds, I would rather listen to Musical Massacre over this album. That's how bad this album is. Um, you can tell in this album, they kind of focus more on the pornographic uh, side of things. I mean, come and look at that. Like, you just can tell. And, you know, pictures like this, you know, and, you know, come on. It's like, so you already know what you're getting yourself into. It's kind of remind me of, like, uh, you know, Necro, His Bitch Ass with, um, the Sexist album, you know, shit like that. Um, but... Yeah, it's just, I don't know, man. It's like, they just feel uninspired to me. You know, it's just like, this is kind of do, uh, I don't know, man. It's just like, I guess it feels like this is the album they always wanted to do. But, you know, their core fans were all about the lyrics. They didn't want to hear the sex tracks. But I think with this album, they kind of like, all right, man, the, our fans, you know, we've been doing what you want, but we kind of want to do what we want. And this is the result of that. Um, yeah, I mean, songs like Hot, um, Finals is Cool, um, We Getting Paper, Uh-Huh, Down, Freak Off, and the Milk Me. It was like the only good songs I liked from it. And that's not really saying a lot either, you know? Um, I don't know. And then, like, another thing, too, like, uh, they didn't use as much samples. It was, like, more, they used, like, more live instrumentation. Live you can tell that, you know, um, they had, like, um, they kind of played out the songs themselves or they had, they hired people. Uh, because, you know, back then, you know, this, well, even now with the sample clearance issues and things like that, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just too much. And I, to me, I, I, I love samples. I, I don't care what nobody says. To me, the best people that could do, like, um, live instrumentation is, like, niggas from the West Coast and, this, and down South, in my personal opinion. Um, it's just, to me, like, when it comes to the East Coast, Samples, you know, Vane Supreme. I'm sorry, that's just what it is. There's nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, hip hop sort of break beats, so that's just what it is. But, um, it just didn't work in their favor. Um, if they ever, if this would be the last time they ever drop, I'll be okay with it. I'm okay with the first three albums, honestly, with the first three projects, um, being Intoxicated Demons, Street Level, and Stone Crazy. I'm okay with those. Those, you know, you know. They definitely uh did their thing on those albums and because also Vic of Ghetto Pros had his hands on those albums production wise and like the mixing and stuff like that. Even though like I don't think uh Vic got credit for Stone Crazy, but he said he had his hands on, you know, some of the mixing and he just had his hands, he helped around with the Stone Crazy era. But for the most part, um Juju and you know Psycho Les did their thing on that album. On Stone Crazy, but um, yeah, man, 
Um, highly disappointed with this album, but I'm glad I got it. Um, let me know what you guys think, man. Um, again, definitely probably the weakest album in the discography. And yeah, I, use, I know I talk a lot of shit about Musical Masco, but I would rather listen to Musical Masco over this shit. It's my personal opinion. But um, yeah, Milk Me by the Big Beat Nuts. Uh, this was released in uh, 2004. Let me know what you guys think. Oh, and another thing too. Um, I know it's, um nowadays um, Psycho Less he's he moved out to California. I think he was in like Pasadena. Um, you know he uh he does the um, he does the Be Real podcast, the Be Real show out in Cali. Uh, he does um he does he is part of that podcast, so he does his thing with them. And like Juju, he's been kind of quiet. He doesn't really do a lot of interviews. He does. He's not really on social media like that. Um. Psycholess is like the more social one, the more, um, more active, if you will, especially on social media. Juju is kind of like reserved, he kind of keeps himself, you know, that kind of thing. So, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, that review. Definitely stay tuned for more. Yes, I know you guys been asking, some of you guys been asking me off YouTube, yeah, hey, what's up with the CD halls? And I got that. Don't worry, don't worry, I got that on lock. But I just want to cover album reviews because, you know, I feel like most of the time I always do CD um, collection, which those are fun to do. But um, I think these are albums that people need to talk about and get themselves familiar with it. Um, I know this album is out of print, so if you can find it, definitely pick it up. It might be a little hard to find. You know, being at CDs we, right now, become a, becoming a kind of a, a novelty nowadays, like a commodity, if you will. But yeah, that's pretty much shit, folks. Let me know what you guys think. All right? Peace.